Okay, good. So under this review, we need our theory about the constant demand EOQ that we discussed in the other video. So under constant demand, uh, so, so let me just be clear, we are talking about dynamic probabilistic demand, but we need the theory as built up by the EOQ analysis, which assumes constant demand. So not only that the demand for the year is constant, the demand for each and every day is the same. We are, we are assured of a customer coming in to buy 20 tires every day. Definitely no more, but also no less, right? So, so that was the kind of a surreal, unrealistic assumption made in our discussion of the EOQ theory. Um, so if it's not real, then why do we do it, right? Uh, but it is now brought into our, our discussion about having probabilistic demand. Why? Okay, we'll see why. But just a quick review first. All demands for the product will be satisfied, right? So in other words, we always have enough goods to sell that will not be stock out. There will not be such a case when the customer stands at our door holds the money on their hand and say we need 20 tires and we say sorry we don't have tires to sell right so no, no such thing um, lead time is constant okay so uh, no early delivery no last minute telephone call that i'm sorry we're going to be late uh, we apologize for that no such thing right so lead time we promise three days delivery it's always exactly three days now earlier in commercial sense need not be better because if you promise three days time, um, our warehouse is planned for clearance in three days time. And uh, the first day, the second day after the order, it is still full. So if you surprise us uh, by delivering a day after when you have told us it's three days after, it's not necessarily a pleasant surprise. We, we, we don't have space to hold your goods, right? So lead time is constant. Um, price per unit product is constant. So. So we're making all these assumptions. Um, holding cost is constant, ordering cost is constant. Sometimes these are not really true because holding cost, when you have when you have a lot of goods, you might derive some sort of economic um, economic uh, advantage due to the volume, right? We always do that. And ordering cost, setup cost, same thing, right? Because if you if you spend certain amount of management time to to go through and validate certain uh, pricing and purchases, uh, whether you buy one unit or 10, 20 units or two thousand units, it, it doesn't amount to a lot more in in proportionate sense. So um, we are assuming that it is constant. Now, so perhaps this. This uh, very, very nice triangle line will contrast with our staircase lines, right? So, so in the theory, we assume that uh, everything is constant, okay? Now, what's the big idea? The big idea is this, that we need to answer two numbers. Um, how many to order, when to order. So, in our video discussion about constant EOQ, we said that the quantity to order will be the EOQ quantity, right? Just a quick recap. Our EOQ was basically the formula 2 times the annual demand capital D times the setup cost divided by the holding cost per unit per year. Okay, So that was our order quantity and our reorder point was basically average daily demand d little d that was a constant 20 tires every day times the lead time right because lead time is constant if it's three days then we know that three days before the inventory goes to zero because every day it will be a fixed 20 tire consumption right so we should have 60 tires so uh, if our inventory level was 80 and it dropped to 60 we don't reorder but when it crosses 60 so so the following day when 20 tires were sold we pick up the phone and call right and fair enough three days later just when our inventory goes to zero the delivery arrives and we are then restored to q uh, level of inventory in our warehouse so that much is clear now why do we here uh, refer to a constant demand 
because what we will advocate here in the dynamic demand case is that our order quantity will be Q where we say it will be set to 2ds over h. So let me say again that our order quantity for the dynamic demand case okay will be will be uh, q equals to square root of 2ds over h. In other words it is exactly taken from the EOQ formula. Okay, now why is that the case? Uh, well, this is the part that we need to figure out because answer is already here. The answer is already here with the EOQ formula. We just need to make sense out of it. And the way it goes is uh, some sort of uh, hand-waving argument because we're not going to prove it but try to understand it from the common sense perspective. All right? So we have fluctuating demand that leads to quite obviously right the uh, fluctuating heights of our inventory cycle where each cycle is a triangle okay so if i may i will try to um put a sketch all right so we will smoothen the triangles a little bit here we'll smoothen the triangles a little bit here so we'll we'll just draw it like a straight line well, that still doesn't help in making it look more like a constant demand case because uh, we have fluctuating gradient as a result, even if we just ignore the, the fluctuating height. We have fluctuating width of the triangle as well. All right, so when I connect up the staircases like that, uh, we see fluctuating gradient and, of course, fluctuating widths. Sometimes if we are lucky or unlucky, we have steep demand within a day or two that will clear out our inventory, which leads to a very short cycle. Okay. And sometimes we don't have customers or customers buy very little tires every day. And so we have very long cycles. So the idea is this. If we shift all these triangles, all right, align them, align them into single overlapping triangle case so so let me just redraw before i uh, i uh, mess up the whole sketch so let me gather all these triangles right so i plug them and overlay them where the vertical bar the the actual day of delivery that we receive the delivery from the supplier they are all uh, aligned so if that's the case then we start to get uh, this triangle, right? So this is the first triangle. This gradient is the second triangle. This gradient is the third triangle. All right, and we have many more cycles. And of course, from the from probabilist, uh, probability theory perspective, we will uh, run that to infinity. So so we have infinite number of triangles. Of course, in real life, nothing is infinite. But in theory, infinity helps to simplify things in some sense. So when we do that, uh, let's, let's try to picture that we are selling many, many days very quickly. All right, so we are just thinking through this process in our mind. But let's say that if we are doing business in the, in the usual way, we are marketing, we have some, uh, you know, loyal customers, a few of them, maybe not a lot. We're not assuming too much luxury there. Then most of the time, we should be able to derive some sort of a no normality in that sense, uh, in, the, in the sense that <clears throat> the daily demand ought to be pretty close to the mean. Let's think about that again, right? If you, do, if you sell your business, uh, sell your, your goods, your tires, uh, the demand may fluctuate because sometimes customers may buy a few more as their own spare tires, right? But it won't be the case that they are trying to buy everything all of a sudden. It won't also be the case that uh, they don't buy at all. You know, yeah, maybe we can say don't buy, sure, but that's predictable. You know, but we're saying that in normal days, they don't buy absolutely nothing at all from your, 
from your shop, you know, and that is uh, less likely to happen if assuming you're doing all the things that businesses do, like marketing and selling and all that. So, so we should say that in most cycles, it should end up roughly having the same width. If it's to say that it's roughly having the same width, we are also saying that your gradient ought to be roughly the same, right? Because we are ordering the same quantity all the time, so the height is not going to change too much. But and if we lock the width as well, or it doesn't change too much as well for the width, then your gradient is going to be the same. So that's why we are going to say that uh, if each cycle is one stroke, then many, many strokes will be somewhat having the same line. And occasionally, you will have some strokes that, that go out of the way, all right, either on the right side, meaning that we couldn't sell. For some days, for quite a number of days, uh, there were little demand on the daily basis. Then we should have certain peak days, maybe near, you know, festive seasons, people change tires, you know, so, uh, but that doesn't come often, right? But you know it will happen. So in that sense, it will clear our inventory very rapidly, resulting in steeper gradient, shorter uh, cycle. But something happens here. If you notice, if I sort of uh, uh, now show the intensity of the gradients hitting the axis here, you will find that this part, maybe it is showing 20 here, right, is going to be pretty intense with lesser uh, hits or frequency of observance uh, on the right side and to the left side. And and if, if you kind of uh, have attached both concepts together, you realize that, hey, uh, isn't that going to be showing some sort of normal distribution and to a great extent answer is yes and even if it juts out a little bit uh, doesn't follow a little bit on the left side and all that we're just going to assume right that demand follows daily demand follows normal distribution can do all right so it's not a very um, precarious assumption or, or um, statement to, to make to make that assumption so uh, because of that when we when we buy at certain quantity Q for example all right uh, we will observe this fixed distribution or as, as part of our assumption that the daily uh, demand will follow uh, this but when we when we change our our order quantity, we will have different um, different heights and different shapes of the triangle, and uh, basically that just means that uh, things will change. But demand will have its own shape and pattern, and it won't change, right? So we are just going to assume that demand because demand comes from our customer. They are independent. They have their own thoughts, their own plans, their own schedules. They will. Uh, behave the way they want to behave. Q is a number on the other hand that is under our control. We can order more, we can order less. So the idea is with such changes, what can we do about our order quantity because we would like to fix it right under the continuous review policy. So the idea goes that, hey, you know what? Can we assume that the daily demand is the mean daily demand? Fix it as a constant because that's the the demand quantity that is most frequently encountered, right? Because normal distribution, the mean is the mode. So the the most frequently observed demand quantity is 20. Why don't we say, let's assume that demand is 20 every day. When we do that, something magical happens. Demand is no longer a, a normal curve, a bell curve but it becomes a spike in terms of distribution uh, because it's 100% uh, of the days we observe that it will be 20 because we assume every day there will be a 20 uh, tires.